In this tutorial in Cyberlink PowerDirector, I'd like to share some tips on normalizing audio. What normalization does is it takes all the audio sources in a single track and attempts to make them relatively similar in terms of loudness or gain. Sometimes I find myself watching a poorly normalized video and when I do, I have to reach for the remote. In one scene, I'll turn it up. In the next scene, I'll turn it down. And I'll be punching the remote all through the video because the audio isn't normalized. I can hear some scenes clearly and others not so well. That's what normalization addresses. Now, on the screen, you see track one. And then this track, on the right side, I have a video clip with an audio track. And then to the left of that, I have two separate sources of audio. And when I play any of these, you'll be able to tell that the volume or gain is quite a bit different as they were recorded. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. And here's the third one. Now normalization will attempt to take all of these three different sources of audio on the same track and make them similar. It doesn't work between tracks. Now I'm going to expand this so you can see. I have on track number two a different kind of audio and I have a different one on track number three. This does not work vertically, stacked. So if I'm playing audio at where you see the cursor, and I'm trying to adjust the audio volume or gain on my piano music and my parade audio and my lecture at the bottom. I can't use normalization to do that. We can use other tools in PowerDirector, but that's not what this is for. It only works horizontally. So I want you to think in terms of horizontal, uh, one track at a time in terms of normalizing. Also note that it will normalize perhaps some audio sources I don't see on the screen that may be to the right on my project. So any audio anywhere in a single track will be affected by the normalization process. So that's important to remember. So let's look at what we can do. The easiest way to normalize would be simply to click on the left side. I'll reduce it back and I can simply click to the left of the track I want to work on on the audio channel and right click with the mouse button. And then I see how I have an option that says normalize this audio. And when I click on that it will do the normalization again horizontally on that particular track. So I'll click on that now We'll have our algorithm work on the audio, and you're going to see the change in the waveform right away. You notice now all the waveforms are similar. And you see the bar with the that measures the gain on each of them. It's dramatically lowered the center one, and all of them have been adjusted accordingly. So that's what it will do. I'll do Control Z to undo the changes there and you can see the difference between what we had and what we have now. So that's how you can do it by simply clicking uh, with the right mouse button on the very left side of your track in your audio channel for track number one. The other way to do that where you get more information is to click on the audio mixing room or press the F9 key. When I do that it will show me my tracks and it will show me the tracks that I can normalize. Now one of the things I need to do is stretch this out so I can see my normalized buttons. Now one thing I notice is that if I look at audio channel track number one, that that has normalized in blue over gray, but it's grayed out in tracks two and three. Why? The reason is when I drag down, I notice I only have one audio source in track two and one audio source in track three. This will only be highlighted if you have more than one audio source on that track. And my track that is called Audio 2 does not, so it's grayed out. Now if I were to take one of these two audio sources on track 1 and drag it to track 2, I'll do that right now. 
Now this, notice that normalize is now active on track 2 because it has more than one source to work with. Obviously you can't normalize a single audio source on a track. So that's why some of these will be grayed out and some of them won't in your project. But let's work back at track number 1 again. I'm going to drag this back up. And let's do normalize by clicking on this button. When I click on the button in the audio mixing room, it will go through the same process we saw a few moments ago. And it will change the gain on all three of the clips, identical to what we had before. But now what I have is I have more information in this track. You notice the cursor is adjacent to my center audio. That tells me now that that audio has been reduced almost 13 decibels. When I click and move the cursor over the first clip, you notice that one hasn't changed at all. That is still what it started out at. When I click the last clip, that is about a plus 6 in decibel level. Now you might be able to think, well, I can change it by dragging the slider up and down that's not going to be what you want to do because if you do that you're going to change the audio at that particular frame in your clip. If you want to change all the audio for every audio clip in that particular track and you you like that the fact that they're normalized but you want them a little hotter or a little cooler you can drag the slider here that audio gain is set to 50 percent that's the default. You can change it up or down it will change the gain on every single audio in that entire track. You notice now they're all going up together and they're all going down together. 50 is the default for where the normal is on that setting. So that's an adjustment or a tweak you can make after you've normalized. If you think it's not quite hot enough or it's a little hotter than I like it to be. So that's how you can change this and remember the sliders for the entire track not simply for the individual audio clips. Once again, if you decide you want to change things and you don't like what you've done to one particular clip, I can take any of the audio sources and I can right click on it and then I can choose Restore to Original Volume Level. I've enlarged the track so that you can see that if you want to make additional adjustments, all you need to do is manually hold the mouse over the audio keyframe control and you can drag it up or down and you can adjust it as much as you want for that particular audio clip in your timeline. Those are some tips on normalizing audio in CyberLink PowerDirector.